So you start streaming and most people have a very simple looking overlay with their gameplay and camera looking something like this. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, but with no creativity or brand, you may struggle to stand out a little bit. The issue is custom overlays can be expensive. And especially if you're new to streaming and you're not sure if this thing is for you, well, you don't want to be spending that kind of money to get a custom overlay to help you stand out. Today, I'm starting a series that will show you how I've created all my overlays for free and predominantly all within OBS. We're starting off the series with an overlay for your webcam border. This webcam border will change color and animate within OBS and created all within OBS and with the help of Streamerbot. Before we start, there's a couple of plugins we'll need installed into OBS, as well as obviously you're already having OBS installed and Streamerbot. These plugins are the Move Transition plugin and the StreamFX plugin. I've added the links to both of these in the description alongside the link to Streamerbot just in case you haven't already got that installed. Now, I'm not gonna do a video on how to install OBS plugins as there are plenty of great creators that have already gone about this. So instead, I've added a link, hopefully in a tile above my head, that will take you to one of these videos, or at least it'll be in the description somewhere. But once everything is installed, we can go ahead and start creating the overlay. Once you've installed all the OBS plugins, OBS itself, and Streamerbot, it's time to get to starting on actually creating the overlay. Obviously, we need to bring in a camera for our camera overlay. I like to make the use of nested scenes, so I'm going to create a nested scene for my camera, which I will then bring into every scene I want to use a camera for. Then you just have to bring in your video capture device to this scene. I'm going to use my Logitech C920 in this case, because that's what I've got plugged in and set up ready. Sometimes you have to sort out the resolution you want for your scene, so change that to custom and then select the resolution you want. For me, I'm going 1920 by 1080p. Then just stretch the camera so it fits your screen or go on right click and transform and fit the screen. Now we have to create our next nested scene. This scene is what we're going to use to create our webcam overlay in. Now we're going to bring in our nested scene we just created last time. I like to use the source mirror plugin which then enables us to source mirror the camera scene we created last time. This just means we can add filters to it and it won't affect that individual nested scene we created. So just select the camera scene we created previously. Now it's about resizing this overlay. Shrink it by about a third and center it to your screen. Now it's time to start adding filters. This overlay will use quite a few filters, so pay attention. The first filter we're gonna add is the crop and pad filter. But firstly, we're gonna pad, so we're gonna call it pad. Padding adds extra pixels to your source. So we're gonna do this and in order to pad, you put minus figures in each option. We're gonna put minus 50 for each of the left, top, right, and bottom options. Now we add our next filter, which is gonna be a crop. So go back to the same crop slash pad filter and call it crop. We use this crop filter to set up the size of the webcam we want for whatever scene we're gonna use it in. In this example, I'm gonna use it in the gaming scene. I like to have a vertical camera in my gaming scene, so I'm going to set the pixels to whatever size we want it in order to get that vertical look. This can sometimes be quite a fiddly task to ensure that one, you have the right size you want, and also that you're in the center of your screen. So don't worry if you're like me here and you spend ages testing out different values in order to get the right size which you want. Once you've found a look you're happy with, you need to make sure the filter's in the right order. The top filter is the one that is applied first, and then the one beneath that is happens after that. So it's very important that we crop first and then pad after. So put your crop to the top. I like to have rounded corners on my overlay, but this is optional. To do this, we use user defined shader, and I will add the link to this plugin in my bio. Call it rounded corners, as that's what we're obviously gonna do. And then in order to get the rounded corners working, we need to load the shader text from file. This should take you to a directory with all the shaders included. All we have to do is find the shader called rounded rect, and we just double click it and bring it into the shader. Just like the crop filter, we need to adjust these values to find something we're happy with. Sometimes I find it easier using the slider input, so just click that if that's easier for you 
and drag until you find an area you're happy with. Again, ordering is important and we want the rounded corners to happen before we pad out the source. If like me, after reordering the filters, just go back and change the corner radius until you find one you're happy with. The final filter we're gonna add in the design aspect of the overlay is the SDF effects. This filter is what we'll be using to change the color of our overlay and also what we'll be animating later on. This is where you can let your creativity flow by changing the shadows, outlines, inner shadows, outer glow to whatever you want until you find a look you're happy with. I started by adding a blue shadow and then editing the offset until I found something I was happy with. Again, there's lots of options here for every, every section, whether it's a shadow, a glow, and you can just edit the settings until you find what you're happy with. I then added an outline like the other option. You tick the box you want, then change the color and just edit any settings you want to change to make it how you want it to look. I was quite happy with this as a basic overlay for now, so now we can get on to the next step of animations. In order to animate, we're going to take advantage of the move value filter and we're going to create as many move value filters for as many times as we want the overlay to animate. The first move value filter we're going to add is what we use to reset our animation to the border we designed originally. For the first filter option, you select border and then for the move value type, select settings. You then click get values and simply tick all the boxes we previously made on our SDF border design. Then just go to our custom duration, adjust the custom duration to make it one second. And that is our first move value filter created. Now we create the next borders on. Click the border filter we created earlier and adjust all the filters you want in here. I'm gonna change the shadow to green and then adjust the border outline by reducing the width of the border outline. Once you've got an overlay you're happy with again, now it's about repeating that move value process we did for the reset animation. Add the move value filter and provide it with an appropriate name so you'll be able to recognize which border this is going to represent. Then we just follow the same process we did with the blue reset border. Just click on border for your filter, settings for the what value type, and then get defaults. Again, now go down and tick all the outer shadow and the outline or whatever filters in the SDF effects you are using. Whenever you make the move value filter visible, it will animate between the original value and the new one. And adjusting the timing of the custom duration will change the amount of time the animation takes to take place. If you want to create another border animation, just follow these steps again and you can create as many as you want. But for now, I'm only going to have two just to speed up this video. Obviously, the issue is we can't click on the eye while in game. So we're going to start out the part that automatically animates the overlay. We do this using Streamerbot. So start off by adding an action that will animate the first blue and white border. You do this by right clicking on the actions tab and clicking add action. Then right click on sub actions, select add sub action, go down to OBS and then select set source filter state. Here we want to make sure our scene is our webcam with border, our source is the webcam and then the filter being the blue and white background or whatever your basic border is. We then follow the same process for however many move value filters we have within OBS. But just make sure when you are creating that set source filter visibility, make sure it is set up as visible, otherwise it will not animate. The next step is to create a timed action which will set off an animation after a desired period of time. In Streamerbot, click settings and then go to timed actions. Here, right click and select add. Give a name and a desired time interval. For this example, I'm gonna call it colored camera border and provide an interval of every five seconds, but you can choose what suits you. We'll come back to add an action once we've imported the time looped action I've created which will allow us to easily loop the animations. You'll need to get the file to import the timed action into Streamerbot. To do this, go to my Kofi store which I've linked below and follow the instructions to download the file. Once you've got the file, open it up and copy all the text. Then click on import and paste the text from the TXT file and hit import. Now go back to the actions tab and you'll see the time loop action we've just imported. Click the time loop action and you'll see the list of sub actions 
that we quickly need to edit. The first thing we need to do is get an equal number of if statements to the move value actions we have. So in our case, we have two move values filters. So we keep the first two if statements, but delete the rest. The next step is to change all the variables so that they're unique, because in the future you may want to use this time loop feature again. Simply click the first sub action and put something unique in front of both the existing variable name and destination variable. I'll put cam change for this. Then go into every other sub action within the time loop and put the same text in front of every variable. The final thing we must do is click on both if statements and assign an animation action we created earlier to each. Now we just go back to the timed action we created earlier and add the time looped action we've just created in the action settings. Now, simply go back to OBS and watch as your webcam will seamlessly animate. There's one final step we'll need to do, but before then, if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe. It really helps grow the channel and comment what you want me to look at next, potentially. Now that the animation has been completed, it's time to set up the webcam so it's ready to be used in your gaming scene. Start by centering the webcam in the center of this overlay. And then go to the scene you want the webcam with the new animated border to be in. For now I want it to be in my gaming scene. Add the animated webcam border scene into your gaming scene and reposition and size to where you want your animated webcam to sit. And there you go guys, you've got a fully animated webcam overlay all within OBS and Streamerbot.